Hello, my name is Ian Ockenden. Uh, today we are going to be collecting aquatic insects and the critters that live in the bottom of a river. Uh, the Nottawasaga Valley Conservation Authority uses this information to, to determine the health of the rivers, uh, they're, whether they're good, bad, improving, uh, degrading. Uh, the reason we use aquatic insects is much different than we do for stream chemistry, where you fill a bottle and collect some chemistry and send it off to a lab. We use the aquatic insects because they live in the river for much longer and they're a good gauge of what's going on in terms of stream health for a longer period of time. Uh, chemistry is often a snapshot in time. Some insects are very sensitive and they will only live in the cleanest, freshest water and environments. Others are much less sensitive and they can live in environments which have much higher pollution levels, temperature changes to sediment or more dirt put in the rivers, or even a whole scale digging out of a river. So we're going to get in the river and collect the aquatic insects. Uh, we use a standard piece of equipment, this net. We measure out a, the standard, a width of the river to figure out how far we need to travel. So what I do is I get in and I stir up the bottom. I stir up the top five centimeters or so of the river. Uh, some of the insects burrow down a little bit. So we're trying to get a variety of the different habitats. So I'll get started here. So we start off by kicking up the bottom as we're going. So I'm digging my feet in. I'm kind of doing a shimmy to get a little deeper to get that five centimeters. And I'm using my net and the flow of the river to capture what's coming up, what I'm stirring up. So the flow will actually push my sample into my net. And then when I'm done one pass from one side to the other, I kind of step back and I do it again. And we keep going for three minutes. So I have a helper on the shore who is timing me off so I don't have to count. So I just keep going. And you come across different sticks or rocks or sands in the bottom. And those are all different habitats that insects could live on. So I'm doing my best with my feet to clean these off and make sure my sample gets into my net. Then when I get to the, done to that side, I take a step back and I move back and do a bit more somewhere else. After we've collected our sample, we've got a net full of stuff and you've got to transfer everything that's in your net into your bottle. After we've collected in, in the rivers, uh, we then have to filter the bottle, uh, get the alcohol out of it, uh, and then we weigh it and take our samples and then look at it under the microscope. Looks to be a caddis fly. This is the larval form, so they spend their kid part of their life in, in water. Also looking around, we find this really big guy coming into view here. So this giant head is, is a stonefly, is a predator. He's one of the bigger stoneflies we have around here. After we're done our, with our sample, we have our, our tally counts and I turn my notes, my shorthand notes, into, enter them into a spreadsheet for longer term storage and it also does a little bit of a quick analysis for us. So this site, we found 178 bugs. Uh, in this one index, it rates out as a 6.4, which is an, if you were to grade it, would be an F, saying that this site is poor. Uh, so it's telling me right off the bat, it's not a good site. Uh, and from picking it and having been there, it's an algae issue, um, an algae growth issue stemming from high nutrient levels. It only has nine different types of bugs that we found in our sample. That's very low. Usually we're in the 15 to 20 range. Uh, and our other indicators of quality, uh, something called the percent EPT, usually we're looking for 50% or higher. This is about 8%. Uh, we have very high worms at 38% and very high chronomids at 33%. So all indicators that this site is poor.